reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. something that is close to us, especially in these days, uh, but even though it's something close to us, it's something that's easy to not think about, easy to forget. I'm going to talk about death. And there's a lot uh, sort of built in, there's a lot of mechanisms built into um, any society to assist us, to help us not think about death. We're doing a lot of funerals these days, and we're, I'm spending a lot of time with funeral directors and, and the people that work at the mortuary and stuff. And what they do is, one of the things that sort of mot motivates their living is, they'll take the, the deceased person, the body, and they'll sort of dress the, the body in nice clothes. They'll put makeup on to make, it, make the body look like it's still alive. We don't want to see what a, what a carcass really looks like. Because it's scary. Why? Because it makes us think of our own death. There's a huge, gigantic industry to, you know, sort of anti-aging, uh, you know, different creams, and we don't want to, our, you know, wrinkles on our skin, and we don't want our hair to, to look gray. And, you know, after a certain age, I don't know, it depends on the person, but maybe after the age of 21, your birthdays become sort of not happy days because you see the numbers adding up. I really think a large part of even our entertainment, you know, we watch movies and we play games and we sort of take part in all kinds of these things, kind of a lot of that probably is just to distract ourselves so that just in case we might start thinking about something sad like death, we have something to think about instead. We're really good at avoiding that thought, even though it's all around us. What's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is a practice that was very popular in the Middle Ages called the memento mori. In Latin, it just means remember death. And monks sometimes, you know, you can even see this in movies and in paintings and stuff. Monks once in a while would, would take a skull or some kind of bone or something like that and have it on their desk to always remind themselves, this life is going to end. You are going to die. You, brother so-and-so, are going to die. Okay, this is scary, this is sad, yes. That's the point. Like it or not, it's not our choice. That is where we're headed. All of us, without any exception. Even Jesus was an exception to this. Even in the Eastern tradition, Mary. There's one tradition that says Mary fell asleep, her dormition. She died and rose from the dead the way Jesus did. So there really isn't any exception to this. Like it or not. And like it or not, here's a part that's maybe even scarier in some way. Not only is this body going to perish, but at some point we're going to be forgotten. It might not be for many generations. Maybe our grandkids or their kids are going to remember us. Maybe their kids will remember our names. But after that, that's basically it. That's a scary thought too. We came from dust in the 
biblical image and we're going to dust. That's where we came from and that's where we're going. Now these are very sobering, maybe even dark thoughts to have. And I think it makes sense to have them as Ba'utha is starting tomorrow. That's exactly what Ba'utha was about. Jonah said, your city is going to be destroyed. You're all going to die. He, remembered, he reminded them of death. And that recalling of death in a serious way allowed them to repent really from the depths of, depths of their hearts. But even in our daily life, there's a kind of control, whether or not we think about it, there's a kind of parallel control over our daily lives. There's a, a parallel like sort of symbol of death. Like it or not, we're going to die, but like it or not, sometimes we are completely enslaved to our daily desires. We find ourselves powerless, not just against death, but even against our own temptations. That weakness of our, of our heart and our will is another indication of our, of, our finit, of our finitude, of our mortality. Maybe we're not forgotten because we're still alive, but maybe we are ignored. Maybe we really aren't making the difference that we would want to make or that we should be making. Maybe where we come from even isn't immediately dust, but we come from a family with problems. And as much as we promise ourselves, I'm not going to be this way to our kids, part of that is going to be retained. We're coming from problems and we're going to problems. And sin has a kind of power over us the way death does. This is the kingdom of death. And this is the reality that Christ came to save us from. But He's going to do it in His own way. The kingdom of heaven does not preclude the kingdom of death. When we are baptized, it doesn't mean our body's never going to die, obviously. Every funeral we've had over the last few weeks or ever has been of, of somebody who was baptized. And I hope all of them also were believers. So Jesus didn't come to save us from physical death as if we're just going to be, have bodily immortality. But He came to give us on top of that, parallel to that, in a deeper way, a new kind of birth. Unless you are born anew. What does it mean to be born anew? It means to no longer live this life of mortality. That in our day-to-day -day life, it's not about anymore running away from the body being decaying in a, in a grave. Or running away from the idea of being forgotten. The wind, he says, those who are born of the Spirit. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. What is it like to be born of the Spirit, not of the flesh? What is it like? The wind blows where it wills. It's not about being pulled all over the place by death or by fear or by every one of our temptations. The wind blows where it wants to. One of the fruits of grace, one of the fruits of being born of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Now I get to decide what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to just wake up and then just be completely tormented all day by my temptations and give in to them all the time. Be controlled by my anger, be controlled by my lust. No, through the Spirit of God, I will go where I will. I get to decide. It's not about being ignored. You hear the sound of it. The wind blows where it wills and you hear the sound of it. We are heard. We make a difference when we speak in the Spirit of God. When we're ignored, it's because we're speaking of ourselves. But we know deep down, and everybody knows, we're just a bunch of dust. Why should we be paid attention to? But if we speak in the Spirit of God, we will be heard and we will make a difference. And you do not know where it comes or whither it goes. I know my body came from dust and from a family with its good points and its bad points. And I know my body is going to go back to dust. I know that. But you do not know the place where somebody who lives in the Spirit comes from a mystery, which is God Himself. 
and goes back to a mystery, which is God Himself. We are freed when we live the life of the Spirit. And that is the life to which we are invited today and at every day in our lives. It is the life that our baptism first brought us into and that the Eucharist renews in us every time we receive it. That when the body of Christ enters the temple of our body, now we are no longer just a fleshy temple, a fleshy building. Now the Spirit of God Himself lives in us. And when we embrace it and live it in our daily lives, we are freed even from uh, the shackles of death.